Hello and... P.S. You read the title correctly. I'm Stefan, and on the day this is uploaded, November 2nd, 2017, it is the 10th anniversary of the internet's favorite, or should I say used to be favorite, meme, DreamWorks Animation and Jerry Seinfeld's masterpiece, B-Movie. So of course, because we love indulging ourselves in dead memes, we recorded a commentary over it. So... I mean, we can't get any lower, huh? Why not? So for the people who want to indulge with us, to join us on this adventure, uh, we're watching a direct rip of the DVD version, so if you don't if you want as least amount of overlap as possible, I'd say go for that. I'm not too good with the introductions and the such, so I'm just going to say, press play on your movie on the now. Or don't, and just listen. Prob I don't know which one is the smarter thing to do. May God have mercy on us all. Three, two, one, now. Happy 10th anniversary, everybody! Uh, I am FTA, and I'm joined by uh, TJ MBM uh, Smoothies and the legal recorder of this movie, Stefan, to bring you the commentary everyone's been waiting for. FTCR finally does motherfucking B movie. <laughs> it's, the, it's the B movie, except every time we make a joke, we die inside. We die inside. <laughs> oh my god, it's the thing! It's it's the thing from Stephen's shirt that no one could read. <laughs> can, can can we point out that how how big of a meme this thing has gotten, and no one mentions that this whole thing is read by Jim Cummings. Oh my God! That's that's Jim Cummings. Yes. Damn. Uh, so we're also really late to the party. This meme is like it's it's dead now, isn't it? This meme is dead, but we are bringing it out of retirement to celebrate the anniversary. <laughs> this meme is as dead as all the other jokes we make. Yeah, Stephen, that's true. This, this, this meme is as dead as Find the Computer Room, but we still won't let it die. Oh, that's right! Oh. Find the Computer Room was a meme. Oh. Also, B-Movie comes back every so often. Yeah, it comes alright. <laughs> and then so do we. <laughs> it comes honey. Oh wait, so since he didn't have his shirt on, was he naked that whole time? Did we see a naked bee? You see him naked later when he's in the pool. Oh, he's fully why, naked in the pool. Why does why does he even need a jumper for? And is that his form of masturbation? Sting or that? That was a it's quickie. Not... <laughs> <laughs> so I I still love the fact that you know after Seinfeld to show one of the biggest comedy phenomenons of all time, you know everyone loved it. It made a lot of money. Not me. And then, and nope. Then, well, most people loved it, and then after it ended, kind of Jerry Seinfeld, kind of I think of of his own choice, kind of uh, exited the spotlight for a few years. But this his first big project is fucking this. He died, <laughs> and then he came back. <laughs> what if Seinfeld was still on TV today? <laughs> Cream, cream again, iPad. Guys, why is a bee... Are you guys not <laughs> freaking out about this? Why is a bee driving a car? <laughs> Who makes the tiny bee cars? Do they have tiny bee mechanics? What does the tiny bee car run on? Honey. Honey. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> Their entire infra That's not a pun. infrastructure is built on Why is the bee <laughs> Matthew Broderick in this film. I yep. love. I love. Matthew the, I Broderick. Love, I'm just. I'm just remembered of of the 06 LP where we start yep. equating characters. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. And I think I Tails. think Tails. I think Tails is the Matthew Broderick character. Yep. John Goodman so is in this. Yeah, John Goodman plays the crazy lawyer. No, he's the old son lawyer. He, he's the chicken lawyer. John Goodmoon. Yeah, uh, uh, TJ, essentially, John Goodman plays a human version of the hyper chicken lawyer from Future. I'm sorry, I thought you was corn. It's corn. <laughs> uh, I'm just a simple hyper chicken. <laughs> Badger, where How are there even <laughs> male bees that aren't drones? This isn't how bees work. 
Oh, see, well, see, this is how DreamWorks works. It's a cartoon. Works. Also, it, it, this is very similar to how DreamWorks set up the world of ants in Ants, where you're either a worker or a soldier and nothing else. Wasn't Ants just made because they wanted to get at Bugs Life? Ants was apparently in the beginning of DreamWorks, yeah. Katzen, because Katzenberg came from working at Disney, he had contacts everywhere. So for the first few years of DreamWorks, he would just hear of other movies being made, and he was like, fuck it, we're going to do it first. Yeah, because so it's like, true. They, because in the they beginning, rushed ants. they rushed ants into put that. I mean, ants came out, I think, a few months before Bugs Life did. One month, One exactly. Month. And um, <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, I, I haven't watched it in a few years, but, but I, you know, I, I can remember ants being pretty funny, but Bugs Life just destroyed it at the box office. I love that. That's his legacy, being a prick. <laughs> That's yeah, his well, legacy, I think, and well, he's, with, made... he's going to die with that legacy. Well, you know what's thinking, because I, I can't remember if Katzenberg was fired from Disney or if he left, because he was in charge of the animation he, for a he, while. He left He left Disney because he wanted Michael Eisner's job, and he was like, Michael Eisner was like, yeah, no. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, if someone comes to was like, I want your job, I was like, um, no, I'm, I'm okay, thanks, I like my job. Well, yeah, I mean, Shrek was made completely out of spite for Disney, so there you go. It's weird because yeah, for Shrek, they, they, they took that, that book, and aside from the central character, that's nothing like the book. Oh, yeah. Well, th- to be fair, it was supposed to be, It was originally going to be like the hey, book, and that didn't turn out, and then they changed it. Don't watch the anime unless you read the manga. <laughs> <laughs> is there a B-movie manga? Of, of course, course there is. is. Beachon. <laughs> Barry Senpai! Yes, Matthew Broderick Beachon! <laughs> I like I like how in the manga Barry keeps his name, but Matthew Broderick's character is called Matthew Broderick's son. <laughs> <laughs> is this BK gassed? Is this a torture chamber? Matthew Broderick's is in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> that, that seat right there was the B version of Hostel, just <laughs> fucked up. Oh my god. And Man, we're, we're only, we're we're only six minutes in point. and you've made me cry. <laughs> when does this movie start getting faster? <laughs> <laughs> They haven't said B movie yet. Why is it? Why is it? Why is it the screen just yellow for what's going on? Oh my on? god! Is that this, this isn't like the other YouTube video I watched? <laughs> Why do all the girl bees have beehive haircuts? Uh, I think at least they don't. At least they don't have bee boobs. What? Of course would, they wouldn't I have would, boobs. Would They're not that. mammals. They're not fucking mammals, dude. No, you don't. I think this this movie in particular just shows that Seinfeld not mo- not really much of an actor. <laughs> Like, he's not a very good voice actor in this movie. What are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) What's the deal with money? I mean, he's not a very good actor either. Did you see when he put the bee costume on? He wasn't doing much better then either. (laughs) Those trailers were amazing. Those trailers are funnier than the movie. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's Steven Spielberg showing up. Just talking about how E.T. was made. Yeah, it's crazy how, again, to go back to DreamWorks, Spielberg was, like, in, really involved in the first few years, and he was just like, nah, I'm good, I'm gonna go make movies elsewhere. Well, he's what the S in SKG, for DreamWorks SKG, stands for. It's Spielberg. Yep, Spielberg, Katzenberg, and I, f- I believe Giffen from the uh, music industry. That bee just drank yep. its own gasoline. It was honey. That bee is also it's in honey. a suicide pact. <laughs> <laughs> no shit, he's not. So why did Jerry want to make this? Because Jerry needed iPad. <laughs> no, but like, really, like, does he have passion for bees? Apparently, he, he just he just had this idea to do an animated comedy movie about bees. I like and... the idea that he came to Larry David one day and was just like, I was thinking, what's the deal with honey? I mean, what if bees had a society built inside honeycomb? <laughs> I like to I like to imagine that Jerry Seinfeld once once pitched this for an episode of Seinfeld, and everyone was just like, "Um, oh, no!" Oh like, my god! Like, J- Jerry Jerry wakes up, but he's a bee for some reason. It's a B movie about nothing. <laughs> so, B movie is just it's just a scrapped Seinfeld script. How sad. And just when you think the movie's over, there's gonna be a fourth act. <laughs> Where's Newman no, B? Doesn't this movie, doesn't this movie have a... I it does have a fourth act, and I hate it. What? Yes. Yeah. 
it ends and then it's like, oh no, it's not the end. Yeah. Halfway through the movie, they realized there wasn't going to be a B movie too, so they had to get all the information. In <laughs> this one. That's, that's true. I mean, I wonder. Like, I, I never looked into. I wonder how successful this movie was. Immensely. It was like it was middle of the road. Like it wasn't a huge success, like the Shrek movies or Madagascar, but it wasn't like one of like their weakest. It was just in the middle. So, so it was slightly better than Shark Tale. Yes. Oh no. What are you talking about? That Which was my second pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I'm I'm much more saddened by the fact that we never had the Shark Tale B movie crossover. Which uh, Shark Tale also at some point early in production featured a suicide gag, but they took it out for being too dark. But I guess B movie was when you know if you if you have Jerry Seinfeld. In your movie, suicide jokes are perfect for kids. The the movie where one of the characters gets killed by an anchor is though too dark too dark for a suicide joke. <laughs> yeah. And with and with it. Godfather references. I've but looked, nope, suicide joke, nope, too, too you know, far. At this point I can't remember if, if I mentioned this on a on a part of Luigi's mansion, but literally last week my um, stepfather was over watching Ben for a moment and, and my niece and he was going through Netflix and he was like it's like why is B movie rated PG and I was like there's a suicide joke in it and he just looked at me like why are all you mentioned that in House family of the Dead movies are, uh, family movies are generally rated PG though aren't they isn't Shrek PG I think Shrek uh, I Shrek has sure. swearing in it see in England in England Shrek was rated U which is our version of G uh, uh, c- companies like well, countries are like they they vary in a uh, rating. Like uh, the Seth MacFarlane's Ted, which is rated R over here in Canada, it's rated 14A, which is our PG-13. Oh, it's like I no, it's, don't know why, well, but my my favorite example of that is in so Gremlins, uh, rated PG. It, that and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom were responsible for introducing the PG-13 rating. In England, our ratings are G, which is U, so U, you be like U, which is G, PG, a 12, 15, and an 18. 12, 15, and 18 should be pretty self-explanatory, if not you're an idiot. But so Gremlins, which is PG in America, is rated 15 in England, and that's a, that's a, mass, that's a massive fucking gap between countries. Although England typically is more, is more lenient on like language and sex, and is um, hard on violence, which America is like the other way around. Yep. America's just like you can kill as many people as you want, but if you say fuck more than once, you're you're getting an no R. nipples. <laughs> well, also America is in terms of its movie ratings. America is the land of you can't have a woman have an orgasm. You get a fucking NC seventeen for that. That's why B movie is E ten. <laughs> Rated picky six. Why didn't I? Mo- oh, I had the opportunity to say B ten. God damn it. Oh fuck. <sighs> Way to go, Barry. This commentary is over. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yep, yeah, that's, that's my name. B-movie is an A. Time Magazine. <laughs> B-movie is an A piece of shit. <laughs> it's, it's an A piece of shit. <laughs> Can I get a boneless B-movie? <laughs> I want to know why. Why does the fucking B have claws? Why does the Matthew Broderick B have glasses on? For his B. Who makes the B glasses? <laughs> <sighs> right. So, so Stephen, what was your first time watching this movie? In the theater. <laughs> what? what? You fucking shit! You went to the theater to see this. I like. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Obviously. <laughs> It's a fucking DreamWorks movie with Jerry Seinfeld. It's everything you need to know right there. I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> Wait, so I was 17. So I was, I was 17. I don't know. Whatever. You can't judge a 17-year-old for being stupid. Come on. They're all stupid. Exactly. <laughs> That's a ma- Ask I, me. I just imagine, like, all of Steven's friends are like, out. Is that 17 out getting drunk, doing drugs, having sex? <laughs> Steven, people. I'm going to go see B-movie. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that what we're doing right now in our current years 
I think, I think it was like with a group of people too, and they were like, "What should we? <laughs> oh, what should we see?" And I was like, "Oh, we can see B movie." <laughs> was, you convinced know. other people, you evil fucker. And after the movie, they were like, "Stephen, we're no longer your friend." <laughs> and that's why he was forced to do internet commentary with us. <laughs> On that day, he invented Sonic Movies. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic Movies was born out of B-Movie. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the timeline kind of fits. No, it doesn't. This is 2007. No, uh, no. Sonic Movies came first. In um, fact, excuse should... me, oh. if you look at the canon source material, you'll find that movies' origins truly lie at the dawn of humanity. Did you guys read yeah. the Sonic <laughs> Movies manga? Come on. <laughs> I need to sue Jerry for stealing my Sonic movie's likeness. Uh, what's the deal with bees? Is this movies? where the bees are going to war? <laughs> <laughs> so I like how the video game came out before the movie. How often does that happen? Uh, with licensed the video games, most of the pretty, time. Much, pretty much all, uh, all yeah, most movie tie-in games came out first. I actually remember uh, the Spider-Man 2 game came out first, and yeah. I played that. Simpsons I, I, movie I, I, game I, came I, I out first. That before, yeah, most of them did. So does it ruin the story? Of course. Uh, yeah, for Spider-Man, well, normally it's like, uh, for most of them, it'll be like the same basic story, but they'll ch- like it won't yeah. be exactly the same. And then there'll be sometimes, like, I remember the the Over the Hedge game takes place after um, the movie. Yes, yeah, sometimes. So it's like... Yeah, like, I, I believe the, the Wreck-It Ralph game does that. The Incredibles game is kind of, of like, almost a sequel. It's like, you know, it's the, uh... It's Mr. Incredible and Frozone fighting the Underminer. Well, the, the, that was a sequel game. They did make a one based off the movie that told the movie oh, okay. story. No, I'm confused, though. Don't they typically make, like, licensed games just so they can, like, try to make a franchise out of that one thing? So was Jerry like trying oh. to make a franchise out of B movie or something? Told you, B movie two got cut. I, I think it was just DreamWorks makes games off of their movies. Well, no, I, th- so. I, no, I, I think that just, just at the time making it, it was a, it was a lot more common ten years ago. It was just you were just if it was like either a big summer blockbuster, like a like a uh, established character or a children's movie, you would just make a game out of That's it. That's stupid. It's like every it's like every Disney movie had a game. Every DreamWorks movie had a game. Mm. Um, I, I guess I guess at this point they realized that most of the games suck, and I guess that they probably stopped making that much money. So you know what? You, you don't really see that anymore. Like Good. I think Disney games. I think Disney movies may still get games, but but like I, I can't remember the last time a a superhero movie had a had a licensed tie-in game. They've probably not since Marvel Phase One. Have this, I seen that? This movie's got Pro- balls. probably because. <laughs> Probably because iOS and uh, Android games are where they they think it's easier to make Mi- and sell. Microtransactions, baby. Microtransaction Raptor. You know, you guys are lying pieces of so, shit. I remember tons of games. Okay. Uh, can you, oh, yeah? Can you name one? Yeah, B-Movie, the game. <laughs> The correct title is B movie game. <laughs> There's no the B movie game. So there you go. You had I'm to make fraud. up a game to answer my question. <laughs> Frozen definitely had some games though, right? Frozen, uh, Frozen probably had a show. Yeah. Games. I mean, there's Vampire Pregnant Elsa <laughs> hair <laughs> surgery. <laughs> uh, look at Princess Elise. Oh my God! Is it really? Not Barry. <laughs> This is a Sega Superstars Tennis <laughs> Extreme Edition. I love squash. I love squash and stretch. So we're we're watching this on like the download we're using is not the best quality, and you know this movie is is ten years old. But uh, was was this? I, you know, I I don't remember because I I didn't see it two years after it came out. Was this regarded as as like like uh, top of the range animation when it first came out? I think it was just it was just like okay, Cause I mean, like because I mean like DreamWorks typically do good work. I mean you know they're not really in the same class as as Pixar, but they you know they 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 aren't like like fucking Blue Core Studio, you know. They they typically. I heard they outsourced good. it to Romania. <laughs> they outsourced it to the same company who made uh, Ratatouille. <laughs> Ratatouille, starring that one guy who sounds suspiciously like Mike Pollock. <laughs> I think the, the the backgrounds look really nice, 
It's just the character, the character animations, just it's very mixed. It is mixed. It's very, sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's awful. Vehicular it's, ups- it's upsetting. I would have, I would have, I would have taken. Oh, I would have taken. I don't know why the cricket upset me. <laughs> um, dead. Yeah, I would have preferred like if it were just like a mid grade the whole way through instead of being good and bad. So I mean, do you think to me does it does it vary from scene to scene, or is it just like character to character? No, it's scene to scene because sometimes Barry's good, sometimes he's bad, and I wonder because I I know in in Dis- Disney will typically have like one animator working a character throughout the entire movie. I wonder if um if DreamWorks just like have animators work on specific scenes. I know certain studios will have people work with different characters uh just based on if they're doing like action or non-action or stuff like that hmm. um but i know i know again definitely in the 2d animation but like disney would have like one guy would do like in aladdin like you'd have one guy would animate genie one guy would do yeah. aladdin i'm not sure if that's the same in the cg don't know yes with C- cg it's very different like it's a lot it's a, a whole group of people that work on like one character or one scene. I remember this scene from Bugs Life. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Ray! So, so, so DreamWorks ripped off Bugs Life twice. This isn't Bugs Life. I mean, there's bugs. Why isn't it called Ant when Movie? Are we... <laughs> when are we gonna? Wait a minute. This isn't Ratatouille. And here we here we have Con- Patrick Warburton, a, gl- a glorious man who's made a career out of one that's voice. That's a that's a continu- continuity error. Matthew Broderick wears glass on his face. How does he not know what glass is? Hmm. 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 <laughs> it's made of honey. <laughs> you idiot, Stephen, Stephen. Technically, that isn't a continuity error. It's a plot hole. Fuck you. Well, look at those individual fabrics. No, you look at them. I mean, they I are- did. Pretty okay. It's just a bump map. They're made of honey. It's just a bump map. <laughs> Wait, did this guy make a pamphlet about himself? Does he just, like, give informational meetings about himself? Like, here's me. Here's what you need to know. These are my strengths. Yes. Oh, man, it's not the guac. That's it's extra. It's to make us... <laughs> <laughs> honey, it's I to make us not kids. like his character, Max. See? Oh. Oh, yeah, those... those... Yes. Those guests look horrible. Yes. Jesus Christ. Every everybody except for Princess Elise looks really awful in this movie. <laughs> I, I like I like uh, Patrick Wolfe. Nah. He's mm. funny. No, I'm talking about. And then Barry's yeah, looking at it. It's like credits. Yeah, yeah. Look, looking at it, yeah, I can tell. Uh, what what's her face looks a lot better than. Like a lot more better than more better. A lot more better. <laughs> a lot, a lot more it's better. More better. It's like more better. It's I understand why she ripped the pamphlet in half. It was to you know say, hey, I don't care about you. But she didn't have to rip it in half to put him out the window. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, this is um. This is Barry's first erection. This is very awkward. Scene this is to watch. this is where Sonic and Elise fall in love. Why does she? Why does she literally look at him with like, let's have sex? <laughs> it's a fucking bee. She like, doesn't. I'm not, I'm not sure if anyone told her this. That's a fucking bee. She thought it was a wasp. I'm not sure if anybody told you this, but nice <laughs> bees finish last. Okay. She thought it was a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's the sequel wasp movie? <laughs> All that white privilege, bro. <laughs> Jesus. What the fuck? Yeah, what? <laughs> like white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Ah, uh, get fucked. <laughs> is it the next day? Why is she still wearing the same clothes? Because they could only afford one model. I swear, she I better not be zone him. <laughs> she ought. He be zone <laughs> <laughs> I hate being stuck in the fucking B zone. <laughs> that was good stuff. Uh, so, uh, Stefan. Oh, it's, it's the meme. It's the memes coming up right now. Where, where it's the line. Here it comes. Suck my B dick. <laughs> yeah, I is remember that. that. Is that the line? So, so you like sucking B dick? <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal with B cum? Oh, there it is. It's just honey! There it is. 
What were you gonna say, Gareth? I forget. I forget what. What was the line? What was the line? The you the you like jazz. Oh, sure. You like jizz. Like, yeah. <laughs> you like jizz. <laughs> that was from that was from uh, Seinfeld original script. It was a more gonna be a adult comedy. You like jizz? No, it's actually from the gay porn parody of B movie. <laughs> I don't even want to know what the fuck that's called. <laughs> it's still B movie. Uh, uh, no, no, it's, it's called <laughs> Gay B movie. <laughs> still B movie. Wait, why did she stab herself with a fork for? Because she's fucking psycho. She thinks she's dreaming. So, she can, so she can tell the police that the bee stabbed her. <laughs> she's trying to resist her sexual urges. <laughs> Again, in the original version, she got a knife and just cut a fucking hand off. <laughs> Some people so, just can't so, live with the darkness in their own hearts, so they just end it all. So, Stefan, well, well, when was the first time you masturbated to this movie? Right now. Uh, <laughs> right, right now, there you go. That's my answer. Same here. Everyone, it's a circle joke. <laughs> oh, my God. But Who I'm wants joking, to play a round of soggy bee movie? But I'm joking off to the bee, you know? The, the, the bunt cake. <laughs> Why is you she trying what? to fatten up the bee? You know, one of my problems with uh, DreamWorks as an, as an, as an animation studio, and, and sometimes Pixar falls victim to this, I feel sometimes they over-animate their characters. Yep. And I know, I, know, I know it's a cartoon that's meant to be bigger and older than life, mm. but like so many of the characters their their like expressions are just so over the top that it it's just like Stop. I know I know you it's like I know you I know you're talking to a bee and that's fucked up and I know you want to fuck the bee and that's also fucked up but you don't have to <laughs> fucking shake your arms around like the fucking crazy person. Yeah. I think it works better on non-humans. I mean, yeah, yeah. Trying to fuck yeah. usually does work. Like like they think about this like this this movie came out a few months before Kung Fu Panda. Get it? And that before. movie looks amazing. Ah, yeah, four you know, Kung Fu Panda. Panda. You I suck my seen, battleship. I have never seen Kung Fu Panda, but I hear it's amazing. Yeah, dude, watch it. It's like actually I good. I've heard it's good. Although, see, the problem is everyone told me that um, How to Train Your Dragon was like one of the best movies ever. And I watched it and I was like, it's good. It's all right. Good. Like, it's a good movie. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. So yeah, if you've actually watched that. Kung Fu movies, then Kung Fu Panda is an even better movie because they do like deep cut hard references and mostly in like that's fight cool. choreography and stuff so that's why i like it are the are the sequels any good or they're still they suffer, yeah no they're still they good suffer for, for, from the uh, shrek syndrome the second one it's just like shrek actually because the second one's still good and the third one's just meh it's okay it's got, it's got good points uh, I, the sh- thir- third one isn't as bad as shrek Exa- the third yeah, got though like the three shrek Fu pandas is pretty bad shrek yeah. the third is pretty yeah. terrible i never even saw the full form because the third yeah. one was so bad in, in ter- fourth shrek four isn't that bad like in terms now, of animated uh, about to reboot it oh yeah they are like in terms of animated Ma- trilogies maybe. that are not toy story it's pretty good hmm. it's up there is it as good as the Aladdin trilogy? Oh man, I mean, can anyone compete with that? No one. King of Thieves is fucking badass. I ki- I kind of like I kind of like Madagascar three just because of how bonkers that one is. I never saw two when I when I first moved here. The first thing I did after getting off the plane when I was here as a you know legal citizen was me and Kerry went to go see Madagascar three. Hey. <laughs> It was fun. It's not, yeah, I, I remember. I remember. You know, thinking it was okay. According to B lore, they just did it. <laughs> you are now with child. Now <laughs> that's just how bees work. <laughs> bees can't have sex with anything other than the queen, though. The it's first, not how bees the work. First, but there is, there's no queen. Hybrid. There's no queen in this no, movie. No, they can have sex with whatever they want. They just can't reproduce with anything else than the queen. Mexi, show your show some fucking respect. She is the queen, the queen of us all. She's queen also of us all. The queen she's of us also all. their mother, and the rest of the hive is supposed to be three fourth sisters. <laughs> so who do you who do you what do you think is Matthew Butterick's best animated role? This or Simba? Inspector Gadget. Gee. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait. You said you'd always be there for me. You know, I just sort of, they, they, there was a crossover between Lion King and this, because in Lion King, there's a line where he shouts at his dead father in the clouds, you said you'd always be here for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the clouds, it's Barry. And then in the clouds, who just basically goes like, it says, Simba, do you like jazz? <laughs> <laughs> I want to I wanna meet uh, James Earl Jones now and just have him say the words, Barry, do you <laughs> like jazz? No, Simba, do you like jazz? Oh, yes, yeah, Simba, do you like jazz? I like the idea of um, of somebody already asking him that, and when, when Gareth asks him, he's like, security? I've been asked that too many times. Get out of here. That was my dick. At what point are we going to talk about the movie? <laughs> I thought we have been talking about the movie. Yeah, well, I want to. I want to get into everyone. So, uh, S- Stefan, when was your when was your first time watching this? Then, uh, when it came out. So, so you, I... so like Steve, and you saw it in the cinema. Yeah. Okay. What about TJ? <laughs> this recording. <laughs> <laughs> Mick, Mixy, how about you? This recording. Okay. No. Oh, okay. I mean, I've seen scenes here and there, but I've never, like, sat down what? and watched this whole damn movie. Totally naked? I, I, totally <laughs> naked. I feel like I feel like that scene was supposed to transition into a musical yeah. number and they forgot to animate it. Which I, I'm very grateful for. <laughs> yeah, but you'll see here that Barry actually fits into the Sonic universe because his feet are also toeless. <laughs> Just like also, all the his Sonic arms are not, And his arms are not blue. Uh, and his full name is Barry the Bee. <gasps> his full name is Barry B. Benson. Fuck and the this, Bee. This is seriously. This is just like he is having a he's having a fucking wet dream about this woman. Yeah. Oh fuck you, Archie! You get the fuck out of here. <laughs> do you? Th- you know what? I I I do I do kind of like this joke. Yeah, that's a good joke. Where they. I, I mean that's I think that's funny. They're like, oh shit, I could have escaped there. I don't give a fuck. Look, look. Although, it, look, it, look, if you, if look, you... look at those eyes. Look at those the fucking eyes she gives him when she turns around. Those are like legit, like the the biggest come fuck me eyes I've ever seen in a children's animated movie. And that's think, why I'm a wreck. I now. think you're reading a bit much into that. No, see this uh, this is Barry's fantasy, and he wants to fuck that human. And in his fantasy, she wants to fuck him. I'm I'm sensing some projection here. Basically, what I'm saying is, is that I want to fuck Barry Benson. <laughs> I was gonna say Gareth wants to fuck me. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, oh no, she blew up. <laughs> the plane blew the fuck up. The uh, Monorola. The, the only way that scene would have been better is if in like the episode of The Simpsons, it just cuts to her screaming out the plane. <laughs> oh my god! Like crusty, like crusty's yeah. plane. That person's Mon- dead. Oh, oh. That was shocking. Mono Mono Gay. Elise! <laughs> Elise! <laughs> then Matthew Bodger comes in. There may still be a way to see her. <laughs> <laughs> they can clone her with the honey. <laughs> Matthew Bodrick Matthew just pulls out a carousel and will nickel back in time. You mean using your honey control, Will? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And <laughs> Patrick Warper and Shadow. Don't That's cr- not off. Don't cry, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> and then what the plane comes name? and kills them all. <laughs> what is her name? What is that character? Vanessa. Say? Right? Vanessa, okay. Princess Vanessa. <laughs> Renee Zellweger. <laughs> Cause that's all everyone in this movie is, just their actor. Did it? Did I? I'm pretty sure Renee Zellweger voiced the um, the female fish in Shark Tale who yes. wanted to fuck Will Smith. That was right. But Will Smith wants to fuck Angelina Jolie. Was, was Will Smith also? And then a also in this movie, there's Chris Rock who was in Madagascar. He plays the the, the zebra. Oh well, look, it's Armando. Uh, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> <in this? laughs> That's racist. I had to make an extra five pesos. <laughs> What is a beanie shoes for? <laughs> Who makes the bee shoes?
No, and now we've we've officially run out of things to talk no, about. No, no, here's, well, I, like here's... The, I like that. I like that. I like that fucking Ray Liotta honey. Like, what the fuck's so yeah. fucking random? We are. Th well, like, I mean, Ray Liotta has nothing else better to do. We're a third of the way in, and we're just now getting to the inciting incident. Yeah, it's it's weird because like Ray Liotta at one point he was a big movie star, and then his his star faded so much he was reduced to playing the principal in Hannah fucking Montana. Oh no! Oh no! Wait a minute, he was. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? Where the f where the fuck did, did that did that fifty percent off sticker come and from? Why is it that was in there literally two? And seconds why is it off. double sided? The sticker was double. -sided. I thought it was just that. I thought it was that his hands are sticky, like with the tennis ball and shit. He's already black and yellow. He doesn't even make himself more black and yellow. Black and also, yellow. If, black and yellow. Okay. <laughs> also, yeah. if he wanted if he wanted to do that, well, then he just take off his yellow jumper. Why did they give the Mexican Ooh. character a knife? Yeah. Uh, it, what it the gets, fuck is this no, movie? It gets worse. I like this animation. At least he can. <laughs> at least he's speaking English. I will say the pacing of this movie is tremendous. <laughs> no, it's it's pretty awful. I like I, I like to imagine this happens to uh, Armando at the weed store, but it's bees coming in trying to steal weed. <laughs> <laughs> We get fucking cockroaches all the time, dude. Why? <laughs> and, and MBM fights them with these little tacks. <laughs> Are you guys eating in your shop? No, it's oh, just... Dude, they sell fucking weed, of course, to eat. <laughs> we, we're eating all the fucking time, dude. It's the best when we order pizza and then they you deliver know, to Steven. us. <laughs> no, uh, it's just because it's in the middle of the fucking desert. Now it's getting cold, so like every, the insects literally have nowhere else to go but inside people's oh, houses. Yeah. Oh look, it's 3D. Before 3D existed, <laughs> I thought 3D existed. You know, since we got a third dimension. There's a third dimension now. Oh, check out this this guy on the bike. Not a relevant character, but we get a full f close up of his face. Like we didn't need that. We didn't need his reaction, but and we'll never <laughs> see him again. But thanks for that. Okay, bye, Fred. They could have they could have saved money just by using a, a different character and just never showing us their face. Yeah. <clears throat> now, they probably spent they probably spent a good amount of money and time on that. DreamWorks are stupid. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I mean, like it's not like if a bee landed use... on my backpack, I would not notice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a reason they had to get bought out by Universal. What DreamWorks did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they used to be independent, and then there'd be like like Paramount first bought distribution rights, and then Twentieth uh, Century Fox, and now Universal just flat out owns them. Ah, oh, no wonder Spielberg, Spielberg just flat out left. Well, it, it, only this year, like they bought them. Well, I mean, well, Spielberg because like you know, all of his movies were uh, through uh, DreamWorks, but now he's gone back to making movies through his Amblin uh, production company. Yeah. Well, because DreamWorks is kind of done now, in Jilly. even live-action DreamWorks is just kind of like not doing anything anymore. Yeah, what, what was the last movie? Was was what was the last movie? Dream live-action movie DreamWorks did was was Munich DreamWorks or was that? I that think was, uh, the last the last couple DreamWorks movies have been like they made a deal with Touchstone, so like Touchstone was like distributing uh, DreamWorks as like own productions, That's but cool. now since that deal. Now that deal's done, they're basically just sitting around waiting until the next project. That's crazy because Touchstone is owned by Disney, so Disney were just gonna release in their kind of one of their biggest rivals. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that that that's the biggest irony of it. That in the end, after everything that happened, Disney ended up bailing out DreamWorks. <laughs> no, oh, the big no. the, the biggest the biggest irony is after so many years of fighting, Sonic is now on Nintendo consoles and sells the best there. That's the ultimate True. irony. And also because this is FTC, I had to shoot on Sonic in somewhere. Do you think... And also Chris Rock is here and then leaves. He, you know, he comes back later. He comes back at the end. For one line. As as Chris Rock said, at, I forget which, which year it was at the Oscars. I think it was like maybe three years or so ago. He went on stage. He was presenting an award. I think maybe for Best Animated Movie. And it he, was. And he said something like, I go into a booth and I say a few lines and I get paid $2 million. And so many like like 
voice actors by trade were like, you know what, Chris Rock? Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. I, I love so- someone uh, impersonated him basically pitch by pitch of him saying that exact line. Mm. And he basically just a fuck you. Yeah. I know uh, Tara Strong was very uh, outspoken about it. She sometimes it gets. <laughs> oh, she managed to take a break from her busy schedule of recording audio for Digimon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Terra Strong, Terra Strong voices every character in a Digimon try. It's very impressive. It is very impressive. It's their best role. I love how evil these beekeepers are. They're like so ridiculously <laughs> evil. When the only way, the only way this could have been better is if these were the two beekeepers from the episode of The Simpsons where Homer gets the sugar. <laughs> the sugar. <laughs> ah, the bees are leaving now. No, no bees means no sugar. The bee, bee, bee. You mean your Chevy? Yes. Don't you think it would have made more sense if Barry came from one of these hives? They need to have like even more motivation. See? Exactly. Giving you giving you notes, Jerry. You B movie two. I'm taking them to heart. For, for B movie two. <laughs> I love how they've got sinks in there. Little tiny sinks to wash their little tiny hands. <laughs> Drive a little tiny B car to work. <laughs> I want them. I want them to reboot this, but it's just called Skeletor Movie about a thing for the Skeletors, yeah. and they're all voiced by Steven. Skeletor Movie, and they're all voiced by TJ. And I think that no, would they're go. All voiced, they're all voiced a little by, something. They're all voiced by Steven because Steven can't do that voice, so it's just a really cheap movie. Cheap movie. <laughs> cheap movie. Cheap movie. <laughs> It's just it's just Johnny and his friends it's going cheep 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 Now you can do double damage next turn. He has a B camera. Investigate oh I can't make a pun. <laughs> why why are they all looking so <laughs> evil at each other when they when they sure, we're gonna fuck this up? <laughs> like, why are they so evil? It's an old man B. Why are all the bees Jewish? <clears throat> the are, you mean the old man and the They're bee? Uh, they are beeish. Stefan, fuck you. I mean, beeish is an actual word they use. Really? Yes. <laughs> fuck it. I hate this movie. They find no. Wait, no, does this actually... movie does this movie have brony language like every every bee? <laughs> Brony language. Like, did they just replace body with B or some shit? Yeah, they're the Smurfs. That sounds B tacky. Uh, Smurf to that. B to that. So who likes honey? I don't. <laughs> no one. Honey it's cool is when you okay. mix it with peanut butter. My man knows. There you go. Oh wait, is this is this the part? Oh great, we're on the is, we're is, on the lost hex. Is this? Oh no, that's it. Happens no. right after. Uh, Stefan, the uh, Stefan, the scene you the scene you're thinking of takes place after the courtroom. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. And and that is probably the one of the if not the funniest joke in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm some surprised there there weren't up oh, there it yeah. is. It's B Larry uh, King. Uh, see, this is at the point where Bar- Larry King would just literally do anything. <laughs> I wonder. Larry King was in Shrek. He was in Shrek. Who was he in Shrek? He was the uh, the he ugly uh, stepsister. So, okay, so so you know what? In England, in England, that role. And the announcer in Shrek 2 were replaced with English personalities. Yeah, because what's her face? Uh, Joan Rivers was also in Shrek 2. Yeah, which they were replaced. And I remember the guy who replaced Larry King was a guy called Jonathan Ross. Um, Distinct because he has that condition where he can't pronounce his R's correctly. But he is a film reviewer. By like, that's his main job. And I remember just thinking, as like, as a man of film, you would you would not want films to be changed from you'd want the same film to be seen everywhere 
You sack of shit, Jonathan Ross. Fuck you. You can't act. Go fuck yourself. Your wife wrote kick ass and wanted, and she's way more talented than you are. Oh and shit, it, really? Yeah, his wife his wife is Jane uh Goldman, Jane Goldman, like, yeah. X Men first class. She like she she's like um Matthew she's, Vaughan's writing partner. Yeah, and she wrote Kingsman. Yeah. I fucking love X X Men First Class does not get the love it deserves. That movie's fucking amazing. Here's here's the face here's the face of all the memes. <laughs> He's like, What the fuck? I love Lemony Snicket. <laughs> She I love Cro. I love Cro. What do you mean you I wanna love... do it with a B? <laughs> <laughs> Kronk is legit one of the best Disney. How does that ever. even work? You're not screaming enough, TJ. <laughs> He's a B for crying out loud. That's not bad. <laughs> TJ's pretty good at an impression. It's the only thing, it's the only skill he has. Now, now say "Hey Peter." Hey in that Peter. Voice. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick B movie, Warburton. Funny, funny moment. <laughs> <laughs> B movie funny moments. It just it's just five seconds. Just gets faster. <laughs> hey, you like you like he's just it's just hey you like juice. <laughs> End of credits. <laughs> Oops, wrong B movie. I know why TJ is always going to weddings in quotes. He's not actually going to weddings. He's actually Seth MacFarlane. And he's just <laughs> always going back to California. Do all this stupid shit. I've been shit. Had. <laughs> I'm going to go back to talking like Patrick Warburton now. <laughs> Please. You were the, you were the tick. I love. Wait, that was him, right? Yes. Yeah, he, that show the, was amazing. Tick, it was not the original the, tick. The original live action. The, no, he the the live action. Wait, the, didn't the cartoon come out first? No, the live action one I think premiered. I think premiered first. It was the live action one was first, oh, and then the shit. cartoon came out after it. Yeah. So fuck you. Yeah, fuck me. <laughs> TJ, I mean, uh, Patrick, but what was it like working with Megan Price on Rules, on Rules of Engagement for eight years? I don't remember much about that show. They paid me in weed. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it, it's it's John Goodmoon. <laughs> John, John Goodman is like, and I know like, you know, uh, traditional voice actors get annoyed at people like, say, uh, Chris Rock and probably even Jerry Seinfeld for, like, they don't really act, they're just gonna do their voice. Uh, John Goodman, very, he's, he's a good vocal range, like, in a, like, a lot of his, um, his roles, he's doing different stuff, like, his, his, his vocal performance in this sounds like nothing like Sully. Yeah. Or and Pacha. Or pa well, I mean, pa Pacha, Pacha and Sully are kind of close. Like, Sully just gets more aggressive. And here's Pacha the thing. Does. He does sort of a different southern accent because he was also in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And it's still kind of a different voice. So he's not just throwing the same southern accent. <laughs> hmm. And not to mention, and Barton Fink. I right? need to see that. That's just, that's not and, a different one. And the Flintstones. Are we just naming fucking John Dr. Goodman? Dr. Eggman. Man. <laughs> Dr. Eggman. <laughs> Also, the weird one of the weirdest things is that Oprah Winfrey just plays the judge, for no reason. Oh it's really? Just, oh, Oprah Winfrey's the judge. Oh. <sighs> she was also the the mother in uh, Princess and the Frog. Oh yeah, but that at least made Why? some yeah. sense. Because they were trying to get a lot of people from like the color purple and Roots to try and like oh. get them into roles in that movie as well. Was was Lavar Burton in Princess and the Frog? He should have been. Yeah, I, fe I feel like he was, but I'm it's not fucking sure. Fucking Jordy LaForge, motherfucker. You show some respect. Now, this guy's clearly Eggman. In our, in our <laughs> B-Movie 06 uh, crossover. He just wants to turn all the bees into robots. That that bald fat guy at the back is uh, <laughs> Knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's got some guts. Is this Courtroom 3, or is this Courtroom Mania? Courtroom CD. Yeah. 
If if these like bees can speak normal, how come they haven't spoken to humans in in the past? It's a bee law, Gareth. <laughs> uh, fuck that bee law. No, but the, uh, there isn't a bee law because he didn't get in trouble for it. These bees could have been fucking humans years ago, just like barriers. How can they hear them if they're so tiny? But no, this, yeah, that that was my other question. Is that why, like, because they they show like how small they are, but it's like how can they even be heard? Stop questioning the logic of the universe they've created. It's made of honey. <laughs> the universe is made of honey. Get over it. There's this thing that DreamWorks and Pixar and Disney and pretty much every animation 3d animation studio does and let's give every character realistic irises in their eyes and i fucking hate it <laughs> oh yeah why is uh, that it, it's it's the bear from over the hedge is it like it's literally the same model oh okay steven why, why do you dislike the realistic irises because it's a cheap it's a cheap thing they do just to give their characters more emotion it's like, oh, I relate to them because you really stare at characters' eyes. But I think it's, first of all, cheap emotional hook. D stop that. And second, um, these are cartoon characters. And then when you look at Sting, for Jesus Christ, it's like, it's disgusting. He's he's cartoon, but he's also realistic. He's in a really bad in-between. <laughs> don't stand so, so close to me. And what, what I don't like about Iris, the realistic Iris, is it's like, be cartoony or be realistic. Be one or the other. The in-between is so hard to do correctly. It is. Cause Honey in a bottle. <laughs> so, I mean, so what, would you would you prefer just maybe just like, fuck you, Radiota. Um, would you prefer maybe just like a, just like, just like a, black, a black dot then? Yeah. For their eyes, okay. Mm. Well, or, I wonder, I, well, I wonder, the, the, know, it's I, not the color. It's not the the fact that they have colored eyes. It's the fact that they're textured colored eyes and made to look like you see them. Look, you can get a real see mm. that. See, Steven, I think I think Sega did that because in 06, the armistice are very detailed. Yeah. In every game, in every game since then, they've really toned that back. Well, yeah, the problem good. is, is that if you detail it any less, you get like spirits within, like glass doll eyes hmm I have, I have I, not, I, I don't I, I don't know I, what you're referencing I, I love the fact that Radiota's Emmy is just for a guest role in ER not for any of the big like he hasn't won any awards for like his big movie roles just an award for like some shitty guest star in ER that's the joke it's, yeah I know it's the joke, but I'm just saying, fuck you, Radio. You know, it... what, what what is more what is more degrading, his role in this or his role in Uwe Bowles in the Name of the King? Oh my God, it's the uh, bee his role, again. <laughs> his role on Hannah Montana. Good point. I don't, I don't understand the motivation behind that delivery, but okay. <laughs> Did are you implying Barry? Crushed your phone battery? Uh, so do you guys like classical music? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if, if Patrick Woolburn likes jizz. <laughs> the answer may surprise you. <laughs> Check out number 15. Um, <laughs> his face. I love this guy's face. He's like a fucking bee. He's giving me tips on my resume. <laughs> like I love how absurd this gets, but it's also terrible, and I hate it. He's the he's the superintendent Chalmers of B movies. He's, he's got he's got a pretty good chin. <laughs> the Aurora B Realis. Hi, Hi Barry the Bee. Hi, Super Nintendo Chalmers. <laughs> Why does the bee shave? Why does the bee have to go to the bathroom? Because it's made of well, honey. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, I thought he had a porno magazine. <laughs> like, he was like, at least let Barry leave before you do that. <laughs> 
I like how that was TJ's objection, though. Why does this character have a porno in a kid's movie? But it's like, let's let the beef finish taking a shit before you fucking crack one out in there. That That's not realistic on how toilet paper disintegrates. <laughs> Oh no, he slipped on his porno. Have you guys ever burned an entire roll of toilet toilet paper with flames? Toilet taper? Toilet paper. <laughs> Bro, I'm high as fuck. I don't care. <laughs> Why is it lethal? <laughs> How many dabs have you dabbed? I I did like four before this movie and I smoked like half a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I got prepared, man. How many dabs can MBM dab? MBM dabs every dab. <laughs> I da- da- dab dab Why <laughs> dab life. Why the fuck? Why the fuck was there one of the, one of those fucking nail sh- you know fires on the fucking toilet seat for <laughs> like what? I don't I don't I don't want to cast judgment on Vanessa, but why does she leave that shit there? Well, there was everything else all around the floor. They had a fight. No, no. See, that was there from from the beginning. Barry didn't move that. <laughs> okay. Just to keep that there. <laughs> Come on, you're going to choose him over me. <laughs> He's a bee. Yes. Did you see hey. six moves? Jerry, He's I got a... a question for you about the bequel. Uh, B2 or not B2? That is the question. <laughs> bequel. <laughs> oh, my God. I want the sequel just to be Barry and Ken going on a, uh, a, a road trip together. <laughs> Can can Mon- can Monsters vs. Aliens get a sequel before B movie? I-, I would very much appreciate that. Uh, mm. Monsters vs. Aliens got a bunch of like straight to DVD and TV show shit. B movie got nothing. As it should. I, I thought Monsters vs. Aliens was pretty shit. Dude, just. I li- the, but that that has more like quote unquote franchise potential. True, than true, but it's, it still wasn't. I I don't think it was very good. With the deep cuts, bro. Yeah. Also, it had Stephen Colbert, so yeah. So thus proven, it's bad. What? Don't even. Wait, was that was that Armando B? No, that that guy was Indian. Come on, Stefan. Yeah, S- Stefan, I'm not every brown character in every movie. All right. Right. Come on. Jesus Christ, he's not the brown M M&M. and M. Show some fucking respect, Stefan. Yeah. We all know I'm just the blue M M&M and M because the pumps match my eyes. A. Oh, did. Wh- which one? It- which one is? Which one's the blue one? I think he's like the cool dude M M&M. and M. I for some weird reason I thought he was a female M M&M and M as well, but I think that's just the green one. I like to imagine. Yeah. I like to imagine that in a lineup, Stefan would still be like, "The which one?" <laughs> <laughs> I never learned the how to read the colors. one that everyone wants to fuck. Well, is it is it the green one? The only female M and M. Yeah, that's the point we were getting at here. Oh, okay, I said. See, this is how boring this movie is. We're having a discussion about Wait the a gender I of think the fucking the, M and M. I think the yellow M M&M and M is also a female. No, the yellow. No, the yellow M&M oh, that's right. The yellow one's by, the peanut uh, J.K. one. J.K. Simmons. Derf. Yeah, yeah. The yellow is the the, the, the Mordecai of the two. The uh, yellow one is voiced by J.K. Simmons. J. J. Jonah Jameson himself is the yellow M M&M. and M. Cave Johnson. No, there's definitely there's definitely and... two female M and Ms. Yeah, isn't there? Yeah, there's a brown one and a green one, right? Yeah, there's a brown one. The well, brown one has glasses. Oh, that's right. Okay. Because the green one is like this, you know, the she's like the Jessica Rabbit of M and M's. She's the one everyone wants to fuck. It's just, uh, same. So you're saying that if if there was an M and M movie, it would be about a, a human man who wants to fuck the green M and M. No, watch no, it. there is an M and M movie. It's called Eight Mile. That movie's damn good. It's a good movie. You better lose yourself. I'm looking oh, spaghetti. at spaghetti. You made me look at the blue M M&M, and M, and they need to modernize him. He needs he needs blue arms and blue legs. Wait, I thought I thought the blue M M&M and M was female. No, blue one's male. He's a oh sorry, so brown. Okay, we have brown. Brown is female. Okay, guys, uh, I love loss. <laughs> Fuck you, Stefan. Okay. Fuck you. He's a film that shitty uh, web comic. I know. 
Is this the top ten anime <laughs> top ten, status? Top ten anime betrayals. <laughs> Bees weak, arms are sweaty. There's there, B movies ready. <laughs> Honey spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Honey spaghetti. <laughs> Honey spaghetti. Why isn't he dead? You should be dead. Because they 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 did a transfer. They gave him that stupid little fucking. Sword as that, a does, that doesn't replace all the internal organs that get ripped out when a bee stings something. Bees don't have noses, fucking... Imbian. They use their antennas to smell stuff. Stop picking it apart! It's beautiful! <laughs> Bees also don't wear sneakers and jumpers or glasses. <laughs> Fuck you, MBM. He, he has a tiny Bee Life magazine <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's listen, all get, listen. But... There's a logical a explanation. A it's all made of honey! <laughs> and I, th I think this. I mean, I know it's not for a plot point, but this may be the one and only instance of of smoking portrayed in a uh, kid CG in a American kid CG Family. animated movie. Yeah, well, it's still being portrayed in a negative context. So I think that's the best you're gonna get, aside from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, putting it out and also telling you not to shoot up heroin. <laughs> wait, wait, the Ninja Toes, did they? I don't know. You're the one who's seen, like, all those drug-free 80 PSA movies. You tell me. Oh, I yeah, think but, he's talk are you, yeah, are you talking about cartoon all-stars? Those weren't movies. And that was only Michelangelo, and he only talked about marijuana. Wow, Mikey. Way to not be a bro and be a buzzkill fucking narc. Yeah, like he's he's gone he's gone to shit now, but 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 when he made that review, the nostalgia critic, one of my favorite points about that show, he talks about how it's it's so disappointing to watch that show because because all my favorite cartoon characters are fucking narcs. It's like that's amazing. This fat bastard stole my son's chair. Give it back. <laughs> my son needs to eat. I love how he has an arm. He has an arm like. Thing on. I love to hear. That... I love to hear that weird thing just to like play with fucking little birds or something on his chair. Have y'all read To Kill a Mockingbird? <laughs> the movie makes oh me God. uncomfortable, so we should no, ban it from the internet. Is, is this gonna? Is this gonna end with uh, Barry getting lynched? Oh. <laughs> Why did why did she make that fucking like James Bond gun pose? Yeah, she she could have got in a lot of trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> can't walk into a corner no, no, pointing no, a metal no. object out. We, we, if this if this if this was really an American courtroom, she would have been gunned down. No, instantly. do you not see the color of her skin? Um, she yes. would have been peacefully restrained. Yeah, but yeah, but you forget she's she's a woman. Only white males get that privilege in America. Oh, uh, I quite understand. I don't understand, like, his jumper, his forearms, like, sag. Is that, is that part of his B? Mm, it's a part of his anatomy. His B anatomy. Oh, okay. Uh, they, made, they, they, made, they made a I white joke. I kind of want to see <laughs> this movie where during the courtroom scene where, like, Barry's giving the speech, it just cuts to the perspective of a juror, and it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. That was Act 3. Barry, Barry completed his goal. Yeah. Yeah, but Wait. the movie is finished. It's one of DreamWorks' shortest. It's only an hour and two minutes. We'll see you guys next year. <laughs> he accomplished his goal, so he got with Renee Zellweger's character? Uh, I mean, his, his did goal? you not see her boyfriend move out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His goal was to free the bees. And John Goodman never shows up again. I say, I say. I'm just a simple hopper chicken. Barry, Barry, when are you gonna address when are you gonna address the fact that B is about half of your guys' saliva? B, B, I have a question. Where's Puppy Cat? I'm sorry, I thought you was corn. <laughs> corn. I'm sorry, I thought you I thought you was honey. <laughs> Free the bees? I d I don't Here it is. Here, here's what is the best joke in the movie. This is so fucked up. Yes, there it is. <laughs> what? Was that was that an Operation Iraqi Freedom reference? <laughs> That's so they, fucked they up. They actually did it. They actually just they got, got to take him out. Poop. 
This is <laughs> this movie is crazy town banana pants. Yep. <laughs> it's like at first it kind of has a message, and now it's like, wait, wait, <laughs> what happened to the message? This reminds me literally of the X gonna give it to you scene montage. Like it's basically. Well, this this also uh, this also movie kind of implies that just this one hive is responsible for all the honey in the world. <laughs> you know, what the fuck are the bees even gonna do with all the honey? Not work anymore. Dude. Well, that, Listen, that, well, that, well, that, MBM, that's it's called uh, bee of the trickle movie. down economics. If you give all the honey <laughs> to the bees, <laughs> then they'll 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 use it as the economy. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you so much. <laughs> what t- what tax bracket are Barry's down. family in, though? They're definitely upper class. Oh we joked about this commentary being too political. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened to B-movie memes. They just got way too political. <laughs> it's, it's anarchy bees. <clears throat> Okay. Now it's the montage. Oh great! You like montages, oh right? My God, we're I... gonna need a montage. Is this movie over? No, we're in. It, we're at. It's Everything Act 4 dies. <laughs> yeah, movies. Movies shouldn't have an act four. <laughs> That's what's so annoying about funny people is like the movie doesn't fucking end. <laughs> Like you, th- you think it's gonna end? I, I, and it oh, goes that's the only hour. thing that's annoying well, about a Judd Apatow movie that goes on for too long. I know, right? But the well, thing is, like, at least at least most Judd Apatow movies do still follow the three act structure. Funny People doesn't. Like Funny People, there's an end, kind of like this. There's an end, and then something else happens for another fucking hour. And it's just like, okay, Judd Apatow. So not only are you gonna keep pushing your wife and children into movies, which immediately they can act, that's fine. But not all of your movies need your wife and daughter in them. I mean, the best Judd Apatow movies are ones that he just produces, so... Uh, yeah, you know, I guess, yeah, okay, so what are you, okay, Stefan, top three. Top three Apatow productions slash movies. Well, I mean, you got, like, stuff like Anchorman, and you got, uh, like, I, uh, like, Superbad. Is no, it's bad. not. Like, mo- no. Mo- 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 most, of, most of the Seth Rogen stuff. Yeah, no, see, that's the thing. I fucking hate Judd Apatow for no reason other than he gave Seth Rogen a career he doesn't deserve. I fucking hate <laughs> Seth Rogen. I have never this found is, him enjoyable in the... anything. Why do you hate Seth Rogen, Paul? Because he can't <laughs> fucking act, and he's completely unpleasant. <laughs> But he makes funny movies. No, he fucking doesn't. <laughs> this is the end. Is funny. The interview is pretty good. I I tried watching the interview, and I think uh, I think North Korea did, did everyone a favor by trying to ban that movie. I got twenty minutes into it, and I was just like, "Life's too short." It's not that bad. It's not that good. This is the end. Aside from the Emma Watson scene, uh, this is the end. It's a very funny movie. You didn't guys tell me this was a prequel to Wall-E. <laughs> <laughs> Dream, DreamWorks and Pixar actually share a uh, interconnected uh, universe. Do you know, have you heard of the Pixar theory? Yeah. The dream, it looks like DreamWorks is connected to the Pixar theory. Uh, the Pixar theory is stupid, though. Yeah, it's, it's I... stupid. Boo, it's, 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 Boo it's, is the witch. <laughs> Boo is the witch, yes. <laughs> what, that's, the, that, that's part of it? Yeah, yeah, that Boo the, is the witch from Brave. Fuck you, whoever came up with that theory. And that Monsters, Inc. doesn't take place in an alternate dimension. It takes place in, like, the far, far future where humans have evolved into monsters. <sighs> there it is, the suicide joke. I laugh how the suicide joke pack appeared at a time when everyone's getting depressed over that stupid Pixar Wait, movie film. Oh. But, what, how, how, could, how, how could Monsters, Inc. take place in the far future... When it, it's confirmed they do travel between dimensions, the monster world does not take place in like the human world. I was uh... they 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 make they have this they they make this point saying that oh no they're just using it's time travel yeah they're time the traveling doors. to the past to present day children and that's why like, fuck off ugh, it's so yeah, stupid it's, it's dumb well see no, see that that doesn't work because there's a plot point. In Monsters, Inc., where they say children these days are harder to scare, if that was the point, and you could time travel, just time travel back yep. forever when they want to yep. scare, so that theory doesn't work. Fuck you. 
I think the, the, their their explanation is that there's a fixed timeline, no, but it's like, fuck eh, that. no. Well, see, the whole universe doesn't work because there's, there's a line in oh. Monsters, Inc. Where, my, where Mike Wazowski says, you've been jealous of my good looks since the third grade in reference to Sully, hmm. but in Monsters, Monsters you they, they don't meet until college. Hmm. Fuck you, Pixar. Fine. Well, the the filmmakers even said they acknowledge that 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 line exists, but they're just like, eh, whatever. We want to do this anyway. I th- I think Monsters You was was a f- it was it was it was an okay slash decent movie, but it is the most pointless Pixar movie ever made. No, that would be I mean, all it, the Cars movies. Uh, Cars One is is decent if if generic. Um, I never bothered this. Cars Two is the only Pixar movie I've never seen because it just looks so bad. It's bad, and I, I'd say Monsters University. The ending and the message of the movie is probably one of the Pixar strongest. Yeah. Again, I like so it. What... I think I think it, it it it's pretty decent. It's just it is you could, you know, if if let let's say that all the Pixar movies truly are this interconnected universe, like say the Marvel movies. Monsters U is the one where you could just remove it. It, it detracts nothing. Uh, now entering yeah. Act 5. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Stephen, unless, unless everything up to the core was just <laughs> Act 1. And oh, Dream you're World right! Really All of, the whole movies. first hour was set up. You're right! <laughs> <laughs> The exciting yeah, the, 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 court, the court is Act Two. Stephen, the exciting incident happens at an hour and one minute, <laughs> like an hour into the movie. Yep. <laughs> Unlike this movie, I'm already. There, there are some movies that that happen. Wait, isn't isn't that what Suicide Squad was? Oh, look! It's a reference to to when Jerry was in the B costume. It's it's Barry in the hey. P costume. And then we'll have, we'll have Perry in the G costume. Oh, that uh, that other girl's dead. Gosh, they're stealing flowers. I wish it was like The Simpsons, where as soon as they get over five miles, the flowers just fall off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> where are you going? Head, head, uh... head to the old mill. No, we're not. We'll school the anyway. Get some cider. <laughs> How how come nobody else now seems to be that perplexed that there's a fucking talking bee? Everyone because is because everyone's a high crazy oh, yeah, except for me. <laughs> Why are you wasting a perfectly good seat? You don't. Wow, Stefan. Yeah. Wow. Neither do you, Stefan. But <laughs> why does the bee use Microsoft Excel? Because it's on his resume. <laughs> ah. <laughs> because this movie was set 10 years ago. Do you think the bees use Google Docs now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Well, look, and see now, now, and these people don't know. They don't have cable. They weren't able to watch the court thing on TV. See, the problem is, is that they're not scared about the bee stinging them now. Now they're scared of the bee suing them. Why the fuck? Even if there was a bee on your co-pilot, why would you sling a fucking handheld vacuum into your co-pilot's face for? Because it's a plot point. This is Act 7. <laughs> The insight, the excite. This is this is actually the end of Act One. The excited is the pilot <laughs> knocks out the plane. Plane. <laughs> The plane hijacking is the actual climax of our story. No, th- no, th- th- this this is a Seinfeld episode. Barry hijacks a plane. Part seven. Barry gets angry, and then J- I do. Jerry hijacks. <laughs> Jerry hijacks. A plane. Is this is this the part where B movie crosses over into the Sonic 06 Let's Play? <laughs> Yes, this is when the plane but crashes into the yes, plane. Vanessa is controlling the plane. <laughs> That's why it crashes. <laughs> the F D the F T C R cannon is deep and rich. Well, I like I like how Barry B. Vinson and Charmy the Bee exist in the same universe. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's the problem is that all of the F T C R Let's Plays exist in the same universe. Mm. <laughs> All of our commentaries are canon in our universe. 
What? Why is Barry's friend hanging out at Barry's house for? Go home, you fucking freak. Go home, Tails. He doesn't have a Go house. Home, Tails. He's homeless. These human character designs are all terrible. Oh, yeah, they are pretty bad. They are so bad. I will say, like, the fucking human characters in Unleashed look way better than these do. Well, but Which? Unleashed are great! At least, at least made the Sonic Team made the smart decision to rip off Pixar, not DreamWorks. So their their uh, character animations look good. I mean, yeah. character designs. DreamWorks human characters is like they're really inconsistent. Like sometimes they look really awkward, like this, but then sometimes they can look like the Shrek humans don't they're look okay. that bad. It's weird because the Shrek humans are going for photorealism. Like they look like humans, but they still look less like these humans. I think have more of the. Uh, "Quote unquote uncanny valley," than the Shrek humans do, because normally that's normally why CG movies go for more stylized humans. It's to make it look less weird, because yeah. you know, if even today, like CG still isn't that quite that the good yet, but uh, it's weird. So uh, this is the point where Vanessa tries to play Top Gun for the NES. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, because with Mastermind, the uh, or Mega Mind, whatever movie that was, the one with Mega Mind. Megamind, mm. like the humans are stylized in that sense, so they look less awkward. They still have mm. they still have DreamWorks face. Oh, they yeah. straight up well, do. See, you know, there's there's that meme. It's like the DreamWorks smile, the DreamWorks smirk. Order, order their the, the, eye, the eyebrows. Well, here's the thing: the Disney stole that back because the smirk is sort of in defiance of the Disney brand. And then when you look at when Tangled had posters, um, they were given the DreamWorks smirk. So DreamWorks is kind of like taking it back. I mean, Disney took it back? Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, they took well, the well, subversion that, well, and are like, hey, that, we're going to subvert too. And it's like, yeah, but this company's been subverting you for like a decade. It's nothing all that new. Well, <laughs> you see, well that, that was that was because Princess and the Frog bombed. So they're like, well, people like DreamWorks then. So we're just going to market our films you like know, DreamWorks. The, and then when people Princess watch and, them. And the Frog didn't bomb. It just didn't yeah, make no. what they Princess, were expecting. Princess and well, the yeah, Frog it didn't, actually Princess bomb, the frog didn't make it, as like, much movie as it should have. And uh, there's kind of a particular reason for that. You all know it, but no one wants to say it. Because yeah. there were frogs in it. Yeah. Yep. And people hate the French. But we... But I mean, it is it is funny how something like Frozen, which was marketed as basically being like a DreamWorks movie and only focused on Olaf, and then the movie comes out and people are like, "Oh, this is something different," but we actually like it, and then it becomes their biggest. Yeah, success. I, w I was actually I at the beginning I I when I first saw the first trailer for Frozen, I was like, "This snowman character is gonna be fucking annoying as shit," and, and, and boy luckily, was he. He's, well, see, I think he's he's less obnoxious in the movie than he is in those trailers. Yeah. Olaf was okay. Yeah, because Disney. I like Olaf. He's, 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 he, he, he works well in context of the movie. The trailers make it look like it's just going to be a stupid snowman for 90 minutes. Yeah. And it, it's not that. Which is why I like. Why I like. Which is why I love how Disney basically tricked everyone. They're just like, oh, people are going to see. The people who like Disney are going to see us no matter what, so we're going to trick all the stupid people who just want to see stupid movies. And it's those same people that are like, "Oh, we'll go and we'll go and put all of our money for the Boss Baby," but Captain Underpants, nah. Why did Boss Baby make money? Why? Do you know? And 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 that and it, it's even more annoying because Boss Baby's animation is just really ugly looking, while Captain Underpants is so amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think it, was was Cap, was Boss Baby DreamWorks? Just yeah, look at it, dude. Of course, it's DreamWorks. Just it's DreamWorks <laughs> face the movie. <laughs> DreamWorks face the movie. Who was um, who was Captain Underpants? Was that uh, that, that was DreamWorks? But it was outsourced to uh, it was it was outsourced to a Canadian animation studio. Yeah, so it wasn't oh, really so that's DreamWorks. That's why you like it. <laughs> and so was that was that an example? I remember reading about this. Was that a semi? Sausage Party example where they just kind of really underpaid their animators. No, no, that one. From what I've read, they actually did pay. They like they, it, it, it was a lot cheaper, mm. like Sausage Party, but they actually paid their animators. Because I remember reading, because Sausage Party was like twenty million. Yeah, and and you know, there's all those Voice stories, talent. which is one of the reasons why I didn't see it. 
Well, yeah. Well, I mean, it, one of the reasons why I didn't see it, plus also the fact that the trailers were fucking horrible. But uh, you know, the fact that you read the stories about how they just fucked over the animators, and apparently it's a problem with with CG studios in general. Where like you know they'll they'll get paid decent money, but then they would be expected to work fucking insane hours and overtime, and like they have threats of. Because apparently in, in in Sausage Party, some of the animators who kind of complained had their names removed from the movie, even though their work yeah. is there. Yeah. Wow. And, yeah, and that's that's fucking like I mean that that's a that's a point. Where, like, at some point, like, I wonder if, if Seth Rogen's ever talked about it. Because Seth Rogen, you know, he wrote it, he's the producer, he's the main, like, he was, in, you know, a big part of the making of that movie. I wonder if he's ever, uh, like, talked about specifically that. The fact that, you know, his, I, that movie I believe, fucked over a lot of people. I believe he came out, he came out and said, I, I believe, like, back when it came out, he did apologize for it. And they were, like, working to fix it. But it was still like the damage was done. Apparently, the apparently the the actual director, again from what I've read, was just a big prick. Uh, well, there there was two of them. One of them was, uh, and one of them was actually a, is actually a DreamWorks director, uh, Conrad Vernon. He, <clears throat> which, which ones did he? Do? X six, we're in X six now. <laughs> He I, co-directed I, Shrek 2 was one yeah, of the ones he I'll co-directed. That, yeah, I know that. Shrek too. So wait, when you look at Barry the Bee as a character with needs and wants, like, I he thought his goal was to win a courtroom battle, but no, it was just to get a job as part of the wait flawed minute, system guys, in the beginning? What? Guys, guys, this is the end of Act 1. The, the inside to the end is Barry becomes a pollen jock. <laughs> and now the movie's going to start now. <laughs> Act the first act is is ninety eight percent of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> also, because it's a DreamWorks movie, we gotta have a pop song. So Beatles. <laughs> that was like sixty percent of the budget. Although you know, just... I'll, I'll say at least they aren't dancing to it. Which that, yeah, that, I mean, like even even it, I really enjoyed Hotel Transylvania, but the fact that like the last minute is just like a big dance number. I'm just like, ugh, like no. Don't do it's that. Like, is this movie over yet? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. almost there. Well, Hotel Transylvania's got, like, fucking really good animation. It does. It's so good. It's real good. I mean... Sony you... Sony Pictures, like, they, they make great animation. Yeah. I mean, you, you can tell that it's there was budget problems. Well, like, there's budget issues, because 90% of that movie just takes place in Dracula's castle in, like, four different sets. So, like, you can tell that, like, they had some... It was... They... they they've admitted that they've... There were so many rewrites. Yeah, well, uh, and like apparently, Gendy, apparently the director came in like almost the last minute. Like oh, he, he was not originally part of that movie, and it, his animationist. I mean, that's why it's 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 a bummer that he never got to make Popeye, because his animate like the fact that that was that's the first time I've seen CG do like Looney Tune esque like stretch and scrutch like really well. I mean, well, like like, like well, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Mm. Uh, that was hell the first. Yes. I love both of those movies. Claudio would touch like Claudio would touch people made it than a first, and I I think that movie is really good, but I actually think Hotel Transylvania does it better. Than, yeah. Than uh, Cloud- Cloudy One, I haven't seen Cloudy Two, but Cloudy One is a really fun movie. It, I think ri- writing wise, Cloudy One I think is better than Hotel Transylvania, but animation wise, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Hotel Transylvania is. And there's Chris Rock's other line. And he probably got paid a million for like five minutes of of. Of uh, voice acting. Damn it, Seinfeld. I become. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't like. The... It's B movie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's it's Evan. It's Evanescence, but it's it's. It's a Seinfeld. It yeah. N- it's Seinfeld, but it says "End my life." <laughs> I don't like how. What to do with evidence? The fact that you know bees not pollinating shit as much nowadays, and you know the fact that bees are dying, it's kind of a serious thing. We might all die because if bees dies, we might go with them. <laughs> and it's like this movie kind of addresses the problem, but doesn't address it properly. And it's like, wait, what are you doing? <laughs> that, that, that's the Shrek font. Okay. So essentially, as, so as as we learned there, guys, Act One was all about Barry becoming a pollen jockey. Act Two, act two is the credits. Was the mi- no, no, Act Two was the minute we spent in that in that legal office, and Act Three was Barry on his way to pollinate some shit. No, act Three was Patrick Warburton's character. 
<laughs> there you go. Four writers. That's why it's Jesus Christ. A mess. Too many cooks. Also, uh, yeah. Too many. Hans cooks. Zimmer. What? Oh yeah. Hans Zimmer was the. Uh, oh my god. Like music. He he didn't he didn't score all of the um, DreamWorks movies, but he was like a, a um. There's he did a lot. He, yeah, he, I know he would that. like oversee the music, like uh. Back, he did Madagascar. Back when back when um, DreamWorks had that slight partnership with Ardman, like they did. Flash um, the Watch the Gromit movie. Um, and yeah. I know that in the commentary they say that Han, even though Nick Park, who did the music for the originals, is the credited music by, in the commentary they say that Hans Zimmer helped write the score as well. And he, he did the music for uh, Prince of Egypt, and which Shark the co director. Yes, yeah, and the co director of this movie is the co director of Prince of Egypt. Yeah, do you remember that when DreamWorks did um, their like hand drawn stuff was beautiful. I mean, some of the some of the like the script wasn't always great, um, but their hand drawn shit was amazing. Rotel Dorado, I, baby. I still say Prince. I still say Prince of Egypt is their best film. Prince of, yeah, Prince of Egypt is a really, really. I mean, it it kind of it it kind of does the uh, kind of does the what's gonna call it. Um, the story of Moses. No, you know, no, I was gonna say it, it kind of pulls the Disney taking of an old story where it just kind of completely fucks with it. But it's, yeah. it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> but it's the Bible, it's so the it's Bible. okay. It's okay. I think, okay TJ, to... I, I think as soon as we started insulting the Bible, TJ left. Nope, I'm not fucking having any of this. <laughs> oh yeah, where did TJ go? See, it's all good. It's fine, but uh, you know, you don't... I hope you saved his there's, audio. You know, there's something additional screenplay material by two. There's six fucking writers for this movie. What it's 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 weird how a lot of movie a lot of anime movies you'll see like additional screenplay screenplay material and then there'll be stuff like a lot of like big name actors will like a, a lot of Disney movies I've noticed that like Wreck It Ralph John C Riley has an additional screenplay writer credit. Well, I know like I, I uh, think the biggest one is is the Simpsons movie eleven credited writers and then and then yeah. there's four like script assistant like script helper credits. Well, dude, with that, they basically just like they just took all the writers in the room and just gave them all the credit. Well, no, I think what it was was there was um four, so four of the eleven. I want to say it was Al Jean, David Merkin, John Schwarzwelder, and John Vitti. I want to say they all took like they all basically broke the basic story into into four into four quarters, and those four writers did like technically wrote those sections and then the other writers in the credited 11 which is part of the main story room apparently towards the end of production they were running a bit behind so they pulled four other guys from the tv show and kind of made a second writer's room where they would like write some scenes and say guys you know look over these scenes and give notes which is one of the funniest things on the soundtrack the fucking spider pig song which is just the old 60s spider-man theme song with a few words changed is technically credited to 11 people 11 11 (laughs) people took spider-man spider-man does whatever a spider can to spider pig spider pig does whatever a spider pig does so that's their they're in their fucking money i don't i don't want to shit on it because i think simpsons movie is pretty damn good and i'm hoping my 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 dream and prediction for the simpson is they'll end it after season 30 then do another sequel and call it a day simpsons is never gonna yeah, stop sure. okay i know they said whatever simpsons is never gonna They'll never stop they, the they, simpsons they, they, have no fear we've got stories for years there i forget if it was like last year or two years ago but there was an episode that they did where uh the simpsons end up going to kang and kodos's uh planet and they said that was the original idea for a second simpsons movie but they decided against well, it because pa- they're like we don't know if we're gonna do a sequel so let's just do it well, i i think i think they've said working on it and the show was um really hard so i i think we will only get a sequel if the show ends and originally camp crusty like back in like ninety three was yeah. gonna be a movie, but then like during like apparently that that episode as as happened a lot during that time of the show came in really short, and I remember um, James Earl Brooks was like, "Let's turn this into a movie," and I think Al Jean was like, "How the fuck are we supposed to get eighty minutes when we're having trouble getting to twenty? You know, <laughs> like how is that gonna work? What you know, one thing I want to give I I like about um, 
animated movies is that they kind of do interesting shit with their credits. So many movies just have like, you know, like black yeah. background, white text, yeah, nothing interesting but in the credits. The animation you know? in this credit scene looks like it's like it's some college student's t- t- typography lesson. Oh, yeah. I mean, normally, like, normally in, in the anim- the uh, credits of animated movies, they'll get stylized. Like, I love the credits to Tangled because they kind of, they're kind of animated in what the original character designs were. Ah. And I like that because all, all of the characters are bigger boobs. <laughs> Yay, Disney. And, all, and also the Hotel Transylvania credits, they have them all in the Gendy Tartakovsky 2D Ooh. style. Mm-hmm. I like when they use concept arts and credits. And uh, I remember the, the Ratatouille one I really liked. And of course, there's the uh, Wreck-It Ralph credits, although it's terrible. It's terrible oh, because God, they yes. apply that fucking Emerald Hill Robotnik mech. Is he in Chemical Plant? I don't fucking think so. There's no you fucking shits. Also, fucking Owl City. Owl City's amazing. Uh, they don't. Every song they make makes me feel happy, and I don't. I'm not comfortable having my emotions <laughs> played that way. Every time I, I hear that song, I get a little teary-eyed. It's like it's I, so I wanna beautiful. I wanna bring this up just because I it's doubtful we'll probably ever do a uh, Wreck It Ralph commentary because we're on the subject of it. I remember at uh what's it Momocon two thousand fifteen there was a panel by a animator. Um I oh, think a, a yeah. picture animator and I, uh, he worked on Wreck It Ralph and afterwards we went up to him because he said I would say he was the character designer for Sonic in that in that um, in Wreck-It Ralph, and we went up to him and spoke to him about it afterwards. We're like, we're we're Sonic nerds. Talk about Sonic, and he was like, Sega, like so Sega sent Disney like like raw files of of what they use for Sonic. I, I, I'm going to imagine it it was like the raw files for like what they used for um like the Unleashed yeah. CG, and and according I think I I forget the gentleman's name. But uh, he he said that um, the file Sega sent them was too good. It was it was like it was like too detailed compared to like all the other models. So they had to make a a for lack of a better term crappier looking version to use in Wreck It Ralph. And I I love the fact that that Sega is producing higher quality models than Disney <laughs> typically does. You That's forgot what, Gareth. That's beautiful. Gareth, what, I, Gareth, you forgot the best part of that story. Hold on. You forgot the best part of the story was that the very next day we all went to the aquarium and we ran into him again. He didn't okay. recognize us, so I reminded him that we were the Sonic guys with the matching shirts. And you all had never felt more embarrassed in your lives. And and he said, security. Now my favorite part, my favorite part of Momocom was still when we and we were at the Sega booth and we took a picture next to the big Sega sign and we all looked sad because we hate Sega in our lives. And we asked some random guy <laughs> to take a picture, and it wasn't it wasn't until afterwards that Chris was like, I'm pretty sure that guy works at Sega. <laughs> yeah, we asked a Sega employee to take a picture of us being disappointed with Sega. So, which is why, which is why Chris doesn't look sad. Chris is like smiling, and he ruined the fucking picture because he was too fucking tricky shit to make fun of Sega in front of Sega. Fuck you, Sega. I, ho- I hope you've enjoyed our B movie commentary where we spent. I'm going to be generous. Say we spent twelve percent of this commentary talking about B movie. Good. Any any does anyone have any last words on B movie? I give it a B out of five. Ah, I just want to say that this this movie, uh, this commentary, has greatly affected my marriage. When I told Carrie what we were going to record today, of all the things I've ever done, this was the one. <laughs> she was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> when I said we were doing a B movie commentary. <laughs> okay. Well, bye. Bye. We'll see you. See you. See you for Never. B movie the game. It's just called B movie game though. It's just complete, which I think <laughs> is that technically started before this. It is like it is. technically. Well, then, that, that will have already been out. Well, join us for now. the rest of well, it. Well, then, then, yeah, we hope you're enjoying enjoying the B movie game, and if not, fuck you. Stefan, end it there. St- hey. Stefan, don't end it there. Also, include what I'm saying right now. Now, end it. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way that a bee should be able to fly. <laughs>